I can't even keep a straight face for this episode. I'm going to have a lot of fun in this one. But today we're going to talk about what I am calling, and I'm dubbing, you could put it in a magazine somewhere, QST magazine or something. <laughs> the most over-advertised, misrepresented radio in the history of all ham radios. This is the Baofeng UV-10R. We're going to have fun doing this episode. We're going to talk about some of the outrageous claims. We're going to test those outrageous claims and see what this radio really does. And uh, we're going to tear it apart and find out what the radio really is internally. And you know what? We're we're actually going to we're going to introduce new features to amateur radios that have never been featured or listed before in the history of ham radio. <laughs> so if you enjoy this video, please consider hitting the subscribe button. But other than that, let's get started. Let's get started with this radio and just jump into things. The UV-10R, when I purchased it, was a 60-watt advertised radio with 24,000 milliamp hour battery life. <laughs> now, the reason I'm laughing and I chuckle is 24,000 milliamp hour battery life. We'll start with that. The average amp amateur radio or HT handy talkie radio is probably somewhere between 1200 milliamp hours and 3200 milliamp hours. And notice I said probably, so you don't need to correct me saying... Well, this radio is 3,900 milliamp hours. I get it. Uh, so this is automatically, we're going to say almost 10 times the typical amateur radio battery capacity for an HT. That's pretty impressive. And then this was advertised as 60 watts, like I mentioned. And uh, the average handy talkie radio is somewhere between, we'll say on high power, 5 watts and up to 10 watts. And that's average. So again, somewhere more than 10 times the actual normal uh, power output for a handy talkie radio. <laughs> Who could not want to buy this radio except for the fact that all those claims are absolutely false. Uh, what else are we going to look at here? There is a special, very, very special feature of this radio. By the way, I purchased this radio on wish.com. Let's go ahead and jump over to wish.com to take a look at the special feature that's advertised as well as kind of look at some of the reviews and get a couple chuckles before we actually check this radio out and then tear this radio apart. Here we are on Wish.com. If you're not familiar with Wish.com, it's a San Francisco-based company, which is a marketplace online for people to buy inexpensive goods from China. And a lot of times you're going to find that those goods are less than mediocre quality. Now, now the Baofeng here in question is the UV-10R. As you can see here, it says 60 watts and 80 kilometer max or kilometer max distance with 24,000 milliamp hour battery life. You can see that listed in a couple places and the price is $25, which you think is a good price. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ignore this 900 watt version for just a few moments as well as this 120 watt version. But uh, I think right now we're probably up to about 1200 watts as far as advertisements go. Let's go ahead and click on this radio as this was the one I purchased. First things first, when we click on this page here, we're going to see that it says it's a 60 watt UV-10R with an 80 kilometer distance and it uses USB charging. And the most important feature of this whole episode, ladies and gentlemen, this is a self-driving radio, meaning this radio, if you put it in the driver's seat, will figure out how to drive your car and it will get you home safely if you're intoxicated or under the influence of any substances. Uh, of course, if you're buying this radio thinking it's going to be 60 watts or 24,000 milliamp hours, you're probably intoxicated or under the influence of some sort of substance. So let's go ahead and talk about some of these claims here. And if we click on this photo right here, it's, remember it said it was USB charging. And if you look at this little hole below the headphone jack here, you're going to see that that's actually the battery. And that's where you plug in your power cable or your USB power cable to, to charge this thing, which is kind of an interesting concept directly to the battery like that. Anyway, here you're going to see just again, you plug in a USB. Putting all that aside, let's go ahead and page down here past these reviews. I will say that if you ever are feeling down and lonesome and you, you're just having a bad day and you want a good laugh, go to wish.com and read some of these reviews. It'll make you happy. If you go down here though, all the way to the bottom, you're going to see the description. And here's the description. Again, 24,000 milliamp hours. It does show that it's a UHF VHF or 136 to 174 and 400 to 520 megahertz radio, meaning it should be capable of transmitting within the amateur radio bands. However, if you look up this number right here in the FCC database or anything with UV-10R, nothing really shows up, which leads me to believe that this radio isn't even FCC certified. 
So here we are with the battery capacity again, 24,000 milliamp hours, but I do want to also talk about this maximum range, eight kilometers to 80 kilometers. And this is actually probably one of the most accurate things in the whole description. See, here's the thing. I could operate on a watt or even a quarter watt of power on top of a mountaintop, for example, where there's no signal interference. And I have a very, I have a very high uh, point where my antenna is at. So I could talk further and it would definitely be feasible to maybe reach out 80 kilometers or somewhere around what 49 or 50 miles on, on top of mountaintop. No problem. So this, this, this range, uh, distance, uh, advertisement might actually be kind of accurate. Other features that it shows is this dual band, dual standby, dual display, which is us again, similar to the UV five R. And it says that the UV 10 R scenes are steamboat, off-road hotel mall, and so on. When you get your radio in the mail and you open the package that the radio is going to be in, you're going to get this box and it's going to be a black box with yellow on the sides, which is not common compared to your typical brown bag box that you receive. Inside of the box is what's important. The first thing that we're going to start off with is you get this antenna here and you get your Baofeng radio. And what you're going to see on it is it looks just like uh, it was advertised. So that's cool. Uh, and then if you flip it over though, it says Baofeng UV10R frequencies and then a serial number, but there's no mention here of an FCC ID again. So anyway, you can see those different kind of connections here on the top where the battery is going to connect to the radio internally. And speaking of batteries, we have a battery here. Now this is the battery I was talking about. And as you can see on the side, that's how you're going to charge the, uh, the radio. Actually, there's two ways to charge the radio, but, uh, if you go ahead and you plug in this radio battery here and here, it'll just click up like, like so right there. And you can see that there's two posts here for charging, which is great because the battery did come or the radio came with this charger here, but here is the problem. Yeah, this charger doesn't work with this radio, but good thing they gave us a USB charging thing so we could charge our radio with USB, except that doesn't work either. Let me show you. So here we are with the radio. And I think initially I said this was the antenna that came with the radio, but I was incorrect and my apologies. It was this antenna right here. So I did have the wrong antenna on there and that's going to be important when we test our 60 Watts. Anyway, so I have the battery here. I have the power cable here and I have a multimeter just to prove to you that this is uh, putting out correct voltage right now. That was 4.9. It's kind of hard to grab at the moment. 4.99 or five volts. So if I plug in this five volts here, um, and let's see. So we're at 7.74 volts. 7.75 volts. Let's let this run for about 30 minutes and see if it increases at all. It's been a little bit of time here and you're going to see that I have the radio battery right here. Let's just go ahead and do it. Positive to positive, negative to negative. And what do you see there? 7.74, 7.75. I can continue to hold on this all day. That's not going to change because this charger doesn't work with this battery suspecting something in the battery. So that sucks. And actually I'm not too upset because I really just buy these radios to, to show them off and see what, what is, or isn't advertised correctly. But with that, when I was kind of playing around with things, I put this charger this way and there was a time in a way I found how to, this is very difficult to put in. Um, but there is a way that you could put it in and it will stay into place just like that. So right now the radio is actually in place with the charger and this is the uh, actual charger that they gave you with uh, the, the radio or the uh, power brick that they gave you with the radio. Now this is not like any Baofeng uh, power supply I've ever seen before, at least factory Baofeng power supply, uh, which again helps me indicate that this radio probably just isn't legit as it is anyway. Let's go ahead and try to plug this in here and see if we could charge this up. I'm glad to see that we got this thing to charge. Uh, so I'm going to let this fully charge and it might take a while at 24,000 milliamp hours and we'll be right back. Fully charged now. And uh, I went ahead and I unplugged the charger and let's go ahead and just check how much, uh, how much voltage this battery reads here. So positive and positive, negative on negative. 
and we're at 8.08, 8.09 volts. Um, I did confirm multiple times that it was finished charging according to the charger which showed green. So with that, uh, that's going to be our full battery as we turn this on here. We get our Baofeng frequency mode and uh, we do have a little battery indicator here. Now this battery indicator, it's hard to see, but this battery indicator does not show that it's fully charged and that's that's fine for now. So anyway, if we go to menu here menu. and we go through the menu, long story short, it's the same kind of menu system you would see with a typical Baofeng UV. 5R. Let's go ahead and test the power output. Okay, so I already uh, keyed up and I identified that I was testing, and here we are. I'm using a Surecom power meter with a frequency counter on 144.985. And just to confirm again, this is W9FFF testing. Again, there it is. It showed 144.985, so it is in or uh, it's on frequency. It's calibrated correctly for frequency functionality. Uh, and if we go ahead now and we're going to change this over to the power setting, it says PR equals zero. And if we go into menu and we go to two, it says it's on high power. So let's see that 60 watts. W9FFF testing. As you can see, it's about 4.9 watts on uh, high power, which, you know, that's a UV5R. It's not bad at all. If we bump it down to low power. Correction, W9FFF testing on low power, 2.4 watts. W9FFF clear. So you can see here we went from 5 watts on high power to about 2.5 watts on low power. So it's a little bit, just, just a tad bit. Uh, here's 60 watts and here's where we are. <laughs> but uh, that's okay. I went ahead and I jumped over to 446.500 and I did also want to mention that this keypad even though it doesn't look like it it does illuminate so <laughs> you got an illuminating keypad but anyway Confirm. let's go ahead and set that power to high Confirm. and we're going to key up and let's see what our power looks like w9 fff testing w9 fff clear right at about three watts of power on high power uhf let me just switch out the antenna here as this isn't the stock antenna This is W9FFF testing one more time. W9FFF clear. And we were right there at three watts again. So guys, I think it's safe to assume that this radio doesn't do 60 watts. I used an MFJ model 226 antenna analyzer, which goes up to 230 megahertz to test this antenna right here from two meter band 144 to 149 megahertz. And I was quite surprised. Let's take a look at the graph. So here we are, I did 144 megahertz all the way up to 149, again, unable to do UHF, but on 144, our SWR standing wave ratio is 1.19 to 1 SWR, and it climbs up at 149 to about 2.28 to 1 SWR. Uh, let's just real quick show you right around 147, and you'll know why in a minute, but 1.72 to 1 SWR, this is completely acceptable in my opinion. And if I click on impedance, the reason I mentioned 147 area was this is kind of where it's pretty well resonant. It's right around 50 ohms, right at 147.413 or so, just right around there, give or take, right? 147.294. And uh, as we saw, though, still the SWR was completely acceptable throughout the band. And I would love to test this on UHF because this little antenna seems to actually be okay. Next, I just hooked this up to a Regal Spectrum Analyzer, and here are the results. After hooking the radio up to the Spectrum Analyzer, these are the results that I received. Now, I want to actually go in a little more detail than I normally do, and maybe help you understand, or at least how I understand it. And if I am wrong, if somebody wanted to let me know in the comments, uh, respectively, I would appreciate it. But here we are. I'm going to first start off by saying that when I transmitted the radio on high power, I was putting out uh, 4.9, 4.89 watts, somewhere around there. So somewhere around 37 dBm. But you're going to see that when I transmitted and what the transmission is here is going to be the main line that we have right here. When I transmitted, I was only putting out, uh, we're going to call it negative 18 dBm. 
Well, the reason for that is in between the radio and the spectrum analyzer, you have to pad the signal and you pad it with an attenuator. Now an attenuator, if you don't use one and you go directly into the spectrum analyzer, you're screaming too loud into the spectrum analyzer and it will overload the spectrum analyzer and then you won't have a spectrum analyzer. So I put a, I put a attenuator in between the radio and the spectrum analyzer. Now the FCC on part 97 section, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, 307E, it says something along the lines of for a transmitter having a mean power of 25 watts or less, uh, the mean power of any spurious emission supplied to the antenna transmission line must not exceed 25 microwatts. It must be at least 40 dB below the mean power of the fundamental emission. The green line that I made here earlier, that's what the fundam fundamental emission is. And the top is the mean. So we're going to call that negative 18 dBm, which would actually put our, I use this, the DL line right here. But uh, that would put our DL line at, we're going to call it negative 58 dBm, somewhere right around there. Uh, and in fact, let me use a thinner line here so it's easier to see, but we're going to call it like right around here. And uh, again, I apologize. I didn't actually just put it in when I did this. So there should be no emissions exceeding that 40 dBm mark. And you can see that these two emissions, even though they're very close, I think that they're within acceptable range. Uh, but that's only one part. The other part is the 25 uh, microwatts or less. And what does that mean? And that's a good question. And this is the part where I might get a little confused myself. Uh, hopefully somebody will jump in there if I get something too wrong. Uh, so check the comments to make sure that, that I didn't completely butcher this. But anyway, what we're going to see here is uh, I'm going to call the, the baseline, if you will, negative 75 dBm right there. Boom. And what it says is 25 microwatts, which is negative 16.02 dBm. So if we go up negative 16 from negative 75, it should put us uh, 10, somewhere right around there. And so we want the spurious emissions to not exceed that red line I just drew. And I cannot tell you for sure whether or not this radio was a pass or a fail. Why can't I tell you this for sure? Well, the, the reason is really quite simple is, yes, this is a Regal Spectrum Analyzer. It's a nice piece of equipment, but uh, I'm an amateur and I don't frequently go get my, my equipment calibrated as it should professionally be calibrated. And even furthermore, the quality of cables you use as well as the attenuator you use all can play an effect. So I don't want to say 100% for sure this is a pass or a fail, uh, but I would probably be okay using this over the airwaves. I have definitely seen bow fungs that were way, way worse shaped than this one. Next up, let's go ahead and drain the battery and find out how many milliamp hours this battery really is. And next up, I took apart the radio and I just wanted to get a look at what was inside of things. So a couple things to note here. First of all, and most importantly, on the board itself, it says 5R TSA V07. And I believe with all certainty or nearly all certainty that this is some derivative of a UV5R board. If it's not just a UV5R. So that's why this doesn't do 900 watts or 150 watts or a billion watts or whatever you want. It's because it's a UV5R, which does five watts. Count them, folks. One, two, three, four, five watts, five watt radio. And uh, anyway, then we have this speaker here, and this is a 16 ohm, one watt speaker, just like the UV5R. So that's all we really need to look at internally. Let's go ahead and test out the battery to wrap things up. Okay, here's the deal. I went ahead to charge this battery. I wanted to charge this battery fully again so that when we ran this test on the continual load tester, we could accurately see that this is 24,000 billion milliamp hours or whatever they're going to say it is. But unfortunately, I couldn't fully charge this. I couldn't charge this at all again because just like that USB charger that didn't work, now the base charger doesn't work at all. Uh, still had a hard time getting it in, made sure it got in, made sure it was hitting the contacts, but the, but the problem was is it's just not taking a charge. I was able to try a couple other chargers too, and I suspect that this battery is bad. Uh, so anyway, right now, this uh, 7.4 volt battery is reading at uh, roughly, I think it's 8.02 volts. All right, we're going to call it 8 volts which isn't going to be completely charged. Uh, so with that also, we're probably not going to see the most accurate result on what this battery capacity is, but we should get kind of close. I'm going to guess it's 1200 milliamp hours. 
Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to conduct that test now, and then we'll get the results here with a continual load tester, and then we're going to wrap up things with some final thoughts. All right, everybody, I'm back, and I wanted to explain to you the continual load tester just to get an idea. And what it does is you hook up your positive to your positive, you know, so on the continual load tester to the battery, and then the negative to the negative as well. So what that does is then you reset this device with these knobs all the way over, and you could actually adjust uh, the amount of continual load that the battery is going to take. So I did uh, have a consistent load on this, and at two and a half hours, we were at one amp hour or a thousand milliamp hour battery life. Now, I do, again, recall that this thing is only eight volts, and I think it should be somewhere around 8.2 to 8.4 volts is, is probably my guess. Uh, but uh, I'm not completely positive. Um, but regardless, those 0.2 or 0.4 or even 0.6 volts that we might see difference, it's not going to make you get 39,000 milliamp hours or 39 amp hours more out of this battery. The fact of the matter is, is this battery is pretty bad. <laughs> uh, a, a typical UV5R battery is 1,800 milliamp hours. Now, would I say that this is 1,800 milliamp hours? I... I would have a hard time even thinking that this is 1800 milliamp hours. I do think it's 1200 milliamp hour battery. But the interesting thing is, if I just set this to the side here for a moment, and I bring in this charger again, now that this is fully discharged, it will uh, charge again. So my assumption is, is this, this battery is just not going to go anywhere past about 8.02 volts. That's pretty much what we have going on right now. Let's kind of just do a recap on everything. Is the UV-10R a great deal at $50? Should you buy it? Is it the best Baofeng radio out there? Is it really 190 watts or whatever it's going to be advertised as next week? Is the battery really 24 or 42,000 milliamp hours or 42 amp hours? And the answer to all that's very, very simply no. In fact, avoid this radio. For $50, this radio is not a good deal. It's a, it's a ripoff. You could buy two UV5Rs for the same price of this radio that I got it for on Wish.com. Now, you might find it for cheaper, like say, oh, it's $40 or it's $35, and it's still not a good deal. Let's just think about this here. The battery doesn't seem to be fully fully capable of being charged all the way. Uh, the spectrum looks good. The purity of the spectrum looks decent. I don't want to say good. It looks decent. Uh, let's see. What else do we got going on with this radio? Uh, it doesn't charge correctly. In fact, that USB charging thing doesn't even work at all avoid this radio and this is this is just my input now there's probably other reviews out there that you might want to go take a look at and please do do your research before you you listen to just one person but anyway that's just my thought on this radio until next time i'm ham radio dude 73 balfang i command you to drive i'm sorry dude i'm afraid i can't do that